notified warnings in January and February about the global danger posed by the coronavirus, while President Trump and lawmakers played down the threat and failed to take action that might have slowed the spread of the pathogen, according to U.S. officials familiar with spy agency reporting. The host Shane Harris, uh, who is a reporter, uh, uh, chairs of Byline and Historic, who joins us now by phone. So Shane, explain what, what officials were being told and who was being told this. Well, what we are reporting tonight is that U.S. intelligence agencies were issuing these various reports that get disseminated out across uh, congressional committees as well as people in the administration, essentially for the most part citing actually public information and giving the intelligence community's analysis that what was happening in China with this virus looked like it had all of the makings of a pandemic. So these were reports that would have been available to people in the administration as well as lawmakers on the Hill who serve in the intelligence committee position. Uh, essentially building this picture uh, through January and February uh, of an outbreak that was not only uh, characteristic of something that was going to have global spread, but importantly, reporting, including from classified sources, we understand, indicated that the Chinese government was not being forthcoming about how bad the situation really was. And that's important because experts have said in those early days of the outbreak in Wuhan, the Chinese government didn't move quickly enough and didn't tell the world enough about what it understood about the virus, and that is information that, uh, at least in the classified channels, was available to key U.S. policymakers uh, as early as January. Is it known how much of this, you know, would end up in briefings that the president would receive on a, on a daily basis? Uh, we're still trying to determine that specific question, but there's, there's no question, I think, at this point, that the information that would have been available to people in congressional committees would have also been available to folks at the White House as well. So we're still trying to determine precisely what intelligence officials would have told the president directly. But we're also reporting is that there were people on his staff who were trying to bring this issue to his attention and felt that the president wasn't engaged sufficiently with the severity of the virus. Yeah, I mean, if you look back at the statements from the president in January and February, it is just, it's a litany of, uh, you know, dismissing this, um, dismissing it as, you know, something, uh, you know, even when the president spoke publicly about it, saying that there's 15 patients, when it came to the United States, there's 15 patients, they're all doing better. Uh, you know, it's gonna, it might just end there. It's going to go away when it gets warm, all, all that sort of stuff. Has there been any response from the White House to your reporting? Now, the White House does not deny that these reports exist, and it essentially, you know, criticizes, the, you know, as they said, Democrats and the media for criticizing the president in response. But, you know, I think you kind of put your finger on it there, Anderson, is that the president was saying something remarkably different from what these intelligence reports were indicating. And to be clear, these reports were not saying the coronavirus is going to break on U.S. shores at date certain. But from what people we understand have seen these, the volume of this was it was coming every day. And by early February, the majority of reports that get disseminated out uh, to, to key people throughout the government was looking at coronavirus and sort of overtaking everything. So the idea that the president was portraying this as something that wasn't at all a concern. It's just totally at odds with what yeah. the intelligence community said. Shane, I also want to bring in Caitlin Collins uh, at, at the White House. Caitlin, I mean, it, it fascinating reporting by Shane and, and others at, at the Washington Post. And you, you think back to some of those things the president said, um, you know, that uh, beyond his, you know, his tete a tete with Diamond and Silk about how this is just going to miraculously disappear, about, you know, telling people that, you know, it's not a pandemic. You know, the thing is a pandemic, that, that they have it totally under control, it's under control. And now he's rewriting history and saying, oh, well, he knew all along it was uh, it, it was going to be a pandemic. Yeah, and that's certainly not the case. I mean, you can lay out a series of remarks that you just did of what the president actually said. And that's what's so interesting about this report, because it says that the intelligence showed that Chinese officials were downplaying the severity of it. So that raises questions of, you know, when it did start to gain traction here in the United States and when the president and his advisors, maybe not the president, but certainly his advisors, the HHS secretary, Dr. Fauci, the CDC director, they started to have these daily meetings about this long before the president started publicly, uh, you know, issuing these statements about the urgency about responding and the guidelines of this virus. You know, why then were they not taking this more seriously and looking into this to see, you know, just how much were these Chinese officials downplaying it? That really raises a lot of questions about the president's initial remarks, because you think they would have been so skeptical of what the Chinese officials were saying. But instead, remember, the president back in January was praising 
the Chinese president saying he was doing a good job trying to contain it, that they were being forthcoming about information. And we now know that's not the case. And officials say actually we lost a lot of precious time because of how much information they did shield. Well, also, Shane, I mean, it's sort of, you know, it's so frustrating what you're reporting that you hear, okay, they're getting these three things, the, the intelligence is out there coming from the U.S. intelligence community. Folks at Capitol Hill are, are being briefed about it. You, you only imagine the president has much more specific uh, and, and urgent and, you know, the, the best information possible. And yet, you know, there's delays on, you know, ridiculous delays on this testing, which is still going on. I mean, all of this, and I think people kind of poo-poo the power of the president to kind of direct all the levers and arms of the U.S. government and say, well, it's up to states and localities. Um, but it matters if the president does not fully agree or believe, the intelligence does not believe or pay attention to or is not even interested in uh, in, in what might happen. It absolutely matters. You're exactly right. I mean, the president could have immediately you know, sensed the urgency of this and taken action. And what we're finding is that even you know, up to the level of his chief of staff and the head of the Domestic Policy Ooh. Council recognized fairly early on that this was a serious problem, and at the very least was going to be a political problem for the president if he didn't engage on it, and we're trying to figure out amongst themselves, essentially, how do we make the boss care about this, uh, and, and then that just goes to show you that this administration seemed to be somewhat paralyzed, absent the involvement of the president or his willingness to engage on what was, by all accounts, clearly a, you know, a pandemic in the making. It, it, I think it, it really underscores the degree to which you have to have in any administration for a response that is going to require the whole of the government, including, frankly, the willingness of the nation to commit to these just drastic measures. You're going to have to have the president willing to engage on it and believing that it's true. And that just wasn't happening yeah. in the early stages. Well, Shane Harris, uh, great reporting as always from the Washington Post. Shane, thank you very much. Caitlin Collins as well. Uh, you know, we've heard the president uh, say, well, how could anyone predict this? This came out of nowhere. Um, plenty of people have predicted have talked about pandemics, uh, the likelihood of this, and other ones, there'll be another one in the future. There's no doubt about that. But someone did predict what the response might be from the White House to a situation like this. Author Michael Lewis, who's one of the great writers, who's written so many fascinating uh, books, often that, that a lot of them get turned into movies. Uh, he wrote a book that predicted President Trump and his administration would not be able to handle a major crisis. We'll talk to Michael Lewis in just a moment. 